Hello, and thanks for joining me as we talk about the non-selective adrenergic blocking agents. Labetalol and carvedilol are the non-selective adrenergic blocking agents. What do we mean by non-selective adrenergic blocking agents? We mean that it's going to block the adrenaline receptors, but it does it in a non-selective way. So we don't just block, for instance, the alpha-1 receptors or the beta-1 or the beta-2 receptors. We block all of those receptors. These are essentially beta blockers, but they have some alpha blocking properties, which I'm going to explain in just a minute. The most common use for the non-selective adrenergic blocking agents is in the treatment of essential hypertension, and that can be alone or in combination with diuretics. However, because they are non-selective, they have quite a few adverse effects. Labetalol and carvedilol are alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2 adrenergic receptor blockers, meaning that they block the actions of adrenaline, or in the United States, epinephrine, at all those receptors. In order to understand the actions and side effects of labetalol and carvedilol, we just need to know what adrenaline does at each one of those receptors and think logically what would happen if we blocked that. So for instance, in the alpha-1 receptor, and they're not just on the blood vessels, so in the blood vessels, they actually constrict the blood vessels and a blocking of that constriction would result in dilation and therefore it would result in a decrease in blood pressure. But they're also, the alpha-1 receptor is also on the iris. It's on the gut. It's in the urinary bladder. And if you think about each one of those, what happens at the pupils of the eye in a sympathetic nervous system stimulation, there's going to be a dilation. So we're blocking that and therefore there's a constriction. So with that, effect, there could be eye pain, there could be decreased night vision or blurred vision. In the GIT, it will block the decrease in peristalsis. So in other words, it's actually going to increase the gut motility, possibly leading to diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and possibly anorexia and flatulence as well. In the urinary bladder, it will block the constrictions, possibly leading to urinary incontinence. Also, the beta receptors are not just on the heart. There are beta-2 receptors on the bronchi. And blocking the dilation of the bronchi is going to result basically in a constriction and therefore they'll be contraindicated in asthma. So as you can see, by blocking the alpha-1 receptors on the blood vessels and by blocking the beta-1 receptors on the heart, it seems like a perfect drug for essential hypertension. But these drugs aren't well tolerated. As a matter of fact, even with the intended action of decreasing the blood pressure, we can go a little bit too much and actually result in hypotension or orthostatic hypotension and dizziness. As a matter of fact, dizziness, 11% of people who are on these medications actually complain of dizziness. Due to the non-selective nature of labetalol and carvedilol, other alternatives are often safer. And now you know. Thanks for joining me.